Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover all sorts of NLC-related topics or anything of interest to libraries and librarians across the state of Nebraska. We have um, guests come in and do speaking here. Also, we have NLC staff, like we are going to have today. Um, we do these sessions, one-hour sessions, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, so you can log on here live to that and we do record the sessions as well if you're not available available on our Wednesday morning. This morning we are have um, Alana Navatni from the Library Commission who is going to talk to us about Google Maps and using those um, for your library. Yep. So I am going to pass things over to Alana. I'll hand over to and <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, today, I am just going to talk about Google Google Maps. And I can tell you right now, I'm definitely not going to be covering everything that Google Maps can do just because there's just so much there. Uh, I just wanted to be able to show you some of the features just enough to get you started, maybe interested in exploring it a little bit more. I have just a few slides today, but uh, most of them are just going to be URLs. So what I'd like to do is jump out to Google Maps and just start showing you around. Um, anytime when I'm presenting, if you have a question or need me to slow down or speed up, um, just give me a holler, uh, raise your hand or something, or just go ahead and start t in the text chat typing a message. I am going to be showing the moving around a lot when I go live out to Google Maps, so I'm hoping that will carry over okay um, to each of your computers. If you start to see that I'm losing images or I'm moving around too much again, just let me know and I will try to slow down. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump out to Google Maps. Second here, I'm rearranging my screen so I can see the text chat box. So just a second before I get started here. <laughs> okay, hopefully now um, everybody can see the Google Maps screen. Um, I should tell you, I did go ahead and already log on to my Google account. Um, you do not have to have a Google account to use Google Maps. But if you do have a Google account, you can um, actually save some of your maps. So that's what I've done today because I do have some examples I've saved. It's easier than me trying to um, type in long URLs or searches. So I've logged on already, so you'll um, notice that as I go um, look through Google Maps. Have all of you today, have you guys played with Google Maps before or looked at Google Maps? Martha has. Crawford has. Definitely, yeah, Crawford and Laura. How about you guys at Stanton? Have you guys played with Google Maps at all? Okay, well. <laughs> Maybe Laura stepped out. We'll go ahead and um, start off. Here is just the basic Google Maps screen. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to show you, show you some of the basic ways to navigate. Um, on the left-hand side, you will see this plus and minus bar. You can use that to zoom in or out. Plus, obviously, zoom in, minus zooms you out. Okay, great, Laura. You can zap the map. Okay, so you'll be able to carry a lot of that over into the Google Maps also. Um, another way to zoom in or out in Google Maps is if you have a mouse that has a scroll wheel on it, um, you can just go ahead and scroll in or out. So that works pretty slick. 
then you can also move around the map. And again, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can use on the top left-hand side of the map here, you can see these arrows. Clicking on them will move you in different directions. Or you can just, when you see the hand, click on the map and drag the map around. Um, that's my preferred way of um, navigating the Google Maps anymore is to use my mouse so I can either just you know, scroll in or drag the map around. Let's go ahead and um, talk a little bit about searching. Up here is the search bar, and um, Google's pretty flexible about how you can search. You can search for an address, a known address if you have it, that's pretty straightforward. Um, but you can also search for a business or a place of interest. So you really don't even have to know the address of a place you're looking for. So I can do um, Do a search for McCook, Nebraska. Do a search. And you can see now it took me right here to McCook. Um, I can do other types of searches. Like I said, for a place, so I could do a search for um, the Eiffel Tower, the Golden Gate Bridge. I can do even a very generic search. I can do libraries in Nebraska. And I've also had luck when I've searched. I can search with Nebraska spelled out, or I could just do any. Um, it usually works for me either way. Um, also, if you're lazy and you just know the place of zip code, so I could do library and I could toss in one of the Lincoln zip codes and find libraries within that specific zip code. I'll be doing a little bit more searching throughout the um, presentation today, but I want to show you a few other options that are um, available for your maps. You'll see across the top here, um, and it usually appears on the right-hand corner of my screen. It's kind of scrunched today, so you can all see it. Um, but this usually does appear more towards the right, not across the top in the center. And you'll see the first option on the far right is terrain. And so that's, if you click on that, you're actually going to see a terrain view of the map. Um, next option there is satellite. And the satellite images are not live. They are actually um, one to three years old. It depends on when they were taken. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a search for Pilgrim, Nebraska. You can see now as I zoom in, you can see the satellite view. There's also an option to show or hide labels. So right now that is on, and so you can see the street numbers um, and labels. If I take that off, then I'm just down to a satellite view. Now, how far you can zoom in really depends on the part of the country you're in. Um, as you can see here, Pilger is a pretty rural area, and it tells me, sorry, we don't have an image at this zoom. So I can't zoom in any farther. Um, but let's go take a look at a few other places. And I need to put my label back on so I can actually see where I'm at. <laughs> So I'm going to um, go ahead and zoom into the Bellevue area now. And there's Offutt Air Force Base. So you can see there's a runway at Offutt. 
then they moved toward the housing developed right around off it. And you can see now here um, in Bellevue, the largest city, I can zoom in a little bit farther than I can when I was out in Pilger. Uh, one of the other interesting things you see when you zoom in or out is you find interesting things like, let me see if I can find it again. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it says, you make America proud. So someone has either somehow or another put that into the field. My guess is it looks like an empty field that maybe they, when they um, dissed it or plowed or whatever the proper word is, um, put that in there. So I'm guessing they did that. So when um, people ban it off it or take off it off it, they look down and they can see that from the air. So it's kind of neat to be able to see these from the satellite images in Google Maps. That is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you know that was there ahead of time or you found it by accident? I found it by accident. Oh, okay. Well, not today. I mean, yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, like, you didn't know that you took a little look for this. You were just looking around off it. So. Yeah, I was looking around Bellevue and ran across this one, but if you actually start doing some other Google searches for, like, um, Google Maps and Easter eggs, and those type of searches, you will find people out there that collect these type of places and do keep a list of them. Mm -hmm. Let's take another. I'm going to go to the Statue of Liberty in New York. So I just typed in Statue of Liberty, and since I've done the search already, it filled in the New York for me already. But um, here is the island. You can see as I zoom in, there is, we're looking down now, the satellite view of the Statue of Liberty. When I move around like this and zoom in and out, um, are you guys still able to see what I'm showing you or am I moving too fast? I think I should rephrase that. Can you see okay, yes or no? <laughs> Oh, great. I'm happy that's working. I was worried that might be a problem, so. I'm going to go back and um, actually go back to Pilger again. I'm going to pick on Pilger a couple times today. So when we talk about the satellite options, um, next to that, the left that is map, and that's just what you normally think of as a map. Shows the streets and roads and have them all nicely labeled. Then to the left of that is more. Now this is kind of cool. You can show photos, videos, Wikipedia entries, and even webcams. So I'm going to show them all here. and. Um, You'll see why I picked on Pilger today. There is the Wikipedia entry for the town of Pilger. And I can't say there's a Wikipedia entry for every town in Nebraska, but uh, I haven't found one yet that doesn't have an entry. So um, it tells you a brief blurb about Pilger. And then I do have a link here to go out to the full article if I'm interested in it. And then you'll see also on Pilger this little black box with kind of a heavy black frame around it. If I click on that, this is actually a YouTube video that the Pilgrim Library did. So that little black box there represents a video from YouTube. So if I wanted to, um, I could actually watch the video now. I'm not too, too sure how that would come across with this live presentation, so I'm not going to click on it and show it to you. You'll have to come on your own time and look at it if you'd like. And then I'm going to have to zoom out because there was actually no pictures in Pilger. Let's see if I zoom out a little bit. There we go. You can see now just south of Pilger here is a picture. And this picture is coming from a place called, and I'm going to say this wrong, I'm sure, Panoramio. 
Um, it is. I guess I'd probably compare it to kind of like Google or to Flickr, but not exactly the same. Um, if you do put anybody can load pictures up onto the website, and then um, the people behind the software will look at them, and if they're approved, and assuming that you have taken the time to map your photo when you upload it, then they, your um, images could potentially end up on both Google Maps and Google Earth. So Google is specifically working with this site for their photos, Correct. not just any photos that might be in like Picasso or Flickr. Correct. Okay. So the, yeah, so as Krista said, they are working particularly with this company. Um, and you know, not to say, I'm not sure if Google owns them or not. I'm not sure on that one. But it is interesting to see images. Um, I am going to go ahead and zoom out a bit more just so you can give an, see an idea of what's all out there. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to remove the Wikipedia one because there's a lot of those. So you can see now, look at all those pictures out there across Nebraska. And there's just a few webcams. And we can get rid of, let's get rid of the videos. And we're still down to a lot of photos. And then we're just going to, and we'll turn off and we're back to the maps now. Um, the last item you'll see here is traffic. And this one only appears when there is someplace on the map where there's traffic information. And let's just say there's not a whole lot of traffic information available in Nebraska. So if you zoom in to Omaha, you can see now these dark green lines means traffic is moving fast in Omaha, so um, that could be helpful if you are heading to a larger city, but like I said, right now, um, Omaha is the only location in Nebraska that has traffic information. And then there is one other option. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I zoomed out far enough. You can see all those stoplights. That actually is a different location that do have traffic information. I'm going to hide that and let's go to, I'm going to go over here and zoom in on New York. in my search yet. I just made the map larger here because I went, what I was trying to see wasn't showing up. I'm almost to Pittsburgh. There's Baltimore. Up to New York. There's, there we go. This is a test of my skills and I'm failing. Geography skills. <laughs> That's what I have Google Maps for. It's not showing up. Maybe I look chicken. I just went ahead and did, even now that I got across there, I went ahead and did a search for New York. Um, no, it's still not showing up. There should be another option up here that sometimes shows up for um, like public transportation. So when you're in places that have, um, you know, subways and really well-defined bus lines and stuff, that option shows, but for some reason it is not appearing today. And I did have to go out to some place again bigger, like New York, to even get this information. Um, it's just not available in Nebraska, so. Well, I guess you'll just have to trust me on that. Sometimes it does work, and that's there. 
Well, they show the little M for Metro. Yeah, it shows the Metro station. It actually usually shows a line showing where the road is. Yeah, when they actually run. Yeah, yeah. so. Oh, well. Well, now that we've zoomed in and out, let's go ahead and I'm going to expand and show my panel again. And I'm going to go ahead and get directions. So I'm going to take a trip across Nebraska. I am going to go from Fall City, Nebraska. I didn't know these because I'm logged into my account and obviously I was practicing before the session. So it has these save me some. I'm going to go from Fall City to Shadron. I'm going to go ahead and say get directions. And you can see now it takes me um, up to Falls City, up into Lincoln. It takes the interstate over, then heads me up through Alliance. And you'll see on the left-hand side now, under driving directions, it actually gives me suggested routes, and it has three of them listed there. You'll see the first one is that I-81 that's highlighted right now. That's pretty straightforward. Then if I put my mouse over the second one, US-20, that one, as you can see, I'm just going to click on it and show that will be the only uh, route shown on the screen here. It takes me up through Norfolk. Whoops. Now, Susan just said she is having problems hearing me. Um, could you please check if you can hear me? Laura can, Crawford, Lane can. Okay. And Susan said I'm back now, so okay, well, let me know if you lose me again. Um, as you can see, I was just saying, here's the second route called US 20. Now, Martha said my, I'm still a little faint talking. I will try to speak up a little bit. So here is the US 20 route. Now the third route really makes me wonder. If I hide it, click on the third route, it's taking me another route through US 20. Look what it's doing. <laughs> it's taking me through Iowa up to Sioux City. Um, out of your way. So, <laughs> you know, I like the scenic route probably quite a bit, but um, going through Iowa to hit to Shadron, just a little too far for me. So um, when you do get directions on any map, and this is not just Google Maps, it's been any map that I've ever played with online, um, just kind of make sure you look at it and we'll do a little bit of common sense. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the I-80 view. And now, again, Google's trying to pick a route. It's probably trying to pick the fastest route with this, with, you know, because this tells me it's 556 miles. Um, it tells me it's going to take nine hours. Again, I'm always a little hesitant personally when it tells me how many hours. I don't always find it to be quite accurate. Um, I think it really depends, of course, on the type of roads you're going on because here we'll be hitting the interstate for quite a ways and then some of the final roads in the panhandle you can go a little faster than the north, you can go 65 sometimes instead of 60. Um, that says one of the great things about Google Maps is it has this nice route for me, but maybe I know I want to change it because personally I like driving Highway 2. So what I can do is I know right here is Highway 2. I'm going to go ahead and make this map bigger because I can't quite see the good um, zoom in as the way I'd like to and still have you see enough of it. There we go, that works pretty well. So I can grab hold of this line and move it. So you can see now I moved it up, so I'm going through Broken Bow. Okay, switch back to me. No, hey, I'll just go that way then. Um, Well, I enjoy going through at Valentine, but to me, I still think it's a little bit of a longer way that way. So I'm actually going to drive the map down, or drag the line down here. So I'm going up through Alliance, that way I can swing by and see Carhenge. 
in them. I don't really want to cut over to Kearney. I want to go up through Grand Island and pick up Highway 2. So then I can just drag it. And then, let's see, I happen to notice <clears throat> over here by Lincoln. They're taking me straight up into Lincoln and cutting across Highway 2. That takes me driving down O Street through Lincoln. Not bad, but, you know, if I can avoid it, I will. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this road down. So then I can just, you know, kind of go through the side of Lincoln and not that directly through it. So I'm going to zoom back out. So you, you can see now here's the route that I ended up with. It's actually different than all three routes that Google provided me. Um, but still, Google will tell me over here on the left that this uh, route that I've chosen, it's 424 miles long. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's going to take about 11 hours to get there. I was just kind of curious. I did keep track of their I-80 route. Their I-80 route was 556 miles. So I'm actually losing 30 miles. But their um, I-80 route said it would take 9 hours and 13 minutes. And now they're telling me this route's going to take 11 hours. So, so I don't know how accurate the time differences are on those two or not. But I still like the flexibility of being able to choose the roads that I want. Excuse me. Um, you'll also see now on the left hand side, I do have kind of a turn by turn detail of my route. So here you can um, add this broken, I'm taking the northeast to exit towards Broken Bow. Then I turn left onto um, Highway 2 and continue that way for 74 miles. You just see that as I go through there, um, step by step. And you also see there is this little camera. And if I can click on it, it's going to do a couple different things. It's going to jump me right to that corner in Falls City that I need to make. And it's also going to show something called Street View. Um, street View is I don't know, fairly new in the past few years. Um, I like to think about it basically as you're driving, being able to sort of drive down the street. Um, what Google has done is attached a camera to the top of the car and has driven down the street taking video. So here I am in Fall City, and it's showing me the exact corner I'm going to have to turn in town. And clicking up. Oops, that one's not a little more. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide the map below. So I'm going to do the little um, arrows down on the left here. And so you can hear, see here now is my street view. And there are arrows on the white line of the road. Clicking on those are going to move me forward or backward. And then I can also use my mouse to drag and change my view. Or up here on the left-hand side where there's arrows, um, I also can just rotate that in around. So the little N always tells me which direction is facing north, which comes in handy. And uh, the arrows on the left and right arrows will just help you kind of turn into a circle here and just pan all the way around. Um, I'm a person who drives usually very uh, visually with landmarks and stuff, you know. Um, I never keep track of what street I'm on. I just know I need to turn by that big blue house or whatever. So when I'm going to some place new, it's kind of helpful for me to <coughs> take a look at the street view. <coughs> and so see where, you know, I can look at the corner and say, oh, okay, when I come to, you know, the pet shop on the corner or, 
the you know the big church or whatever. Um, I'm close to where I need to be, or if I'm going to a library or another business or whatever, um, it's nice to be able to go to the street view and say, oh okay, that's where I'm headed to. Uh, that said, now, not, Street View is not available for every road in the state or the country. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and just click on Google Maps, and hopefully it should take me back to the main like Google Maps starting page. Or Omaha, that's close enough. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make a map larger again. <coughs> And I'm going to zoom out so we can see most of Nebraska. Now, another way to get to the street view is on the top left-hand side, you'll see this yellow person. Clicking on him and dragging him to the map will change parts of the map to blue. So wherever you see those blue lines means there's street view available. So I can just drop a little guy on any spot that has the blue lines. You can see now <clears throat> I am um, out in the middle of the sand hill near Molin. Beautiful country. And I can just drive, for the lack of a better word, down the highway using the arrow keys. So this is all interesting, you know. Um, I appreciate the beauty of Nebraska as much as everybody, I think. But let's go ahead, and I want to show you a few other places that I think are fun to drive around. I'm going to load what is called one of my maps. And I have just um, created a map of uh, different places I wanted to show you some of the um, uh, street views on that I think are interesting because it's not just the United States where the street view is available. You can see now there's hunks of let's see, Australia, um, there's some spots in Japan, and some areas over in Europe now even that happen. So let's go ahead and how about this? I'm going to take you to a corn field. How exciting is that? And you're probably wondering why I found a cornfield interesting. But it's a cornfield in the middle of France. I just randomly happened to drop my street view guy right here one day, and I'm like, huh, I can't tell the difference between me and France and you know, a rural road in the U.S. <laughs> so I just found that interesting. Uh, let's see, we can jump to Amsterdam. So here we are in Amsterdam. And I wasn't sure what, you know, there really is to show in Amsterdam, so I was looking at their Wikipedia in entry, and I happened to run across a picture of this. It's called the um, ING building. It's a company, I'm, you've probably seen the commercials before for ING. I assume this is their headquarters because if you look at it, it has ING up there and it's called the ING house. So just a funky house or place of business in the Netherlands. Again, I can just drive by it. Um, let's see. I have a random street in Japan. So again, I can just, you know, drive down the streets in, in Japan and see what they look like. And on one of these streets, I'm not sure I didn't get the directions right here, keep track of which way I had to go, but, oh, there you go. You can, oops, I lost it and I went one too far. 
we can stop and get some KFC and this is my random street in Japan. <laughs> Somewhere along here too, I also ran across a Denny's and uh, I think Baskin Robbins. <laughs> So, uh, another street view I found fun. We can jump over to Australia. And I don't know how well you can see this, but in this field here, there's a whole bunch of kangaroos. So, as you can tell, I'm easily amused, and I think it's fun looking at street views just um, to get an idea what some of these other places look like that I've not visited before, and just kind of drive down the streets and just see everyday life. Do you guys have any questions for me so far before I change gears? Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead then and do a search for one of the, the, the Isley Library here in Lincoln. Oops, I gotta go ahead and get turn my maps off so you don't keep seeing all the way. Now, so far, um, as you know, I haven't really related what I've been doing to libraries, but here's where I kind of want to change things up a little bit and start talking about um, how you as librarians can use Google Maps. Of course, this obvious, everything I've talked about so far, you can definitely help your patrons, you know, find maps. Um, I think it'd be cool if you had people coming in studying different countries and if the street view is available to take them out and drive by, you know, if they're studying the Golden Gate Bridge, you can, you know, drive across the Golden Gate Bridge or, you know, see what the Eiffel Tower looks like from above or drive by the Eiffel Tower. Um, I think those are all pretty obvious. Um, what I want to do now is, like I said, I did a search for the Isley Library and I am going to zoom in. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to the satellite view of the Isley Library. And so it's telling me, you can see where this letter A is, it's telling me that's where the library is. Now, um, I'm familiar with this area of town, and I know exactly where the library is, but if I was someone new to town, I probably would have no idea just looking at this spot, where is the library? I mean, it could be these buildings right here. It could be this building. It could be that building. Um, probably not this building, but I have seen these little markers be off and much as I have to walk. So one of the nice things in Google Maps is if you click on the A and get the information about the library, you do have the option to edit. And you have a couple options now. I can move the marker. So what I could do now is say move the marker. And it tells me if I'm moving the marker more than 200 meters, your change will not appear immediately. Um, so they do make sure you're not moving markers way, way to the wrong spot. But in this case, I know that this building right here is the Isley Library. So I'm going to just pick that marker and drag it right there because that actually is the library. So that way I can save it. And I have to admit I'm not quite sure if I did more than 200 meters on that move or not. Oh, it says it will not because it was more than 200 meters. But assuming they accept my move, that means then the next person after they get it approved and up we can come here and take a look at it and um, they'll know exactly where the Isley Library is because I actually moved the marker so it's on top of the library. And it's clear to them to know that, okay, I want the building on the north side of Superior, not the one on the south side of Superior. And I hope I got my directions wrong. So if you're in Lincoln, I got that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
So um, that's one thing I would suggest that um, all of you do is go ahead and do a search for your library and see where your little um, pointer shows up. Is it close to your library? Is it down the block? Um, if not, take it and move it um, so it's closer and you know, it shows more accurately where your library is located. Other options that are available is then under edit. Um, actually, I'm going to go and do another search. I'm going to go ahead and search for the um, Stanton Public Library. On the <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pick on you. I hope you don't mind, Laura. <laughs> well, good. I'm happy you're happy about that. Zoom in as far as close as you can in Lincoln on in Stanton, unfortunately. Uh, but you can see here is the little um, A again. If I click on it, um, it's going to give me some information. And under Edit, I do have the option to edit some of the details. So you can see here it's going to let me um, edit. I can change the name, the address, the phone. Uh, website. This, one of the things I was thinking more is maybe you had a different website you wanted to use because this was a generic, it looks like Stanton website. Maybe you had one specifically for the library, which would be great, I think, to add. Um, um, there's a bit more information there, but. Oh, okay, Laura says they do have a link from Stanton Net there, so, um, and that's just fine. And it doesn't, I, my screen is a little smaller here, so you guys can see it, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to show the complete screen here. I can't seem quite, whoops, a way to scroll down, so, but um, I would suggest that you all do a search for your library, take a look at the information there, um, make sure your little marker's right. So, Laura? Is your marker correct here for the library? Can you see enough to tell at this point? I don't think it is, but I'm just guessing, I must admit. Um, another thing you can do is, yeah, Laura said she can't tell, which that's just fine. You can see here in Stanton, I do have some of the street views available. So I can, I'm dropping myself down here in the corner of, I think it was Jack Pine and 10th Street. So I can see a house. A couple houses, there's a church, maybe a school. Not quite sure, I can't drive down Jack Pine Street that way, but <clears throat> this can also be helpful if the street view is available to kind of identify where you're at. And unfortunately, my street view will go down 10th Street, but it's not going to let me go down far enough Jack Pine Street where the library is actually located at. <clears throat> so I wasn't able to quite verify <coughs> excuse me, if this address was ex or the little um, marker was in the lo exact location or not. But or that's something you can come back and do later and check and see if your little marker is in the right spot. And I'm going to go ahead and just close the street view by clicking on the X. And I want to show you one more option then. When you're clicking on it, oh, Laura said they're right across the street from the school, so. Yeah. I think your marker's going to have to be moved just a little bit, Laura. I'm just guessing, but I'm just not familiar enough with that streets in Stanton to make that decision. So, 
Um, back to editing under edit. There is one other option available here, and it's called Claim Your Business. So um, this is something I would suggest that libraries actually do. Um, basically, you're going out and telling Google that, yes, this is my business, I want to claim it. And so this gives you a few more options. Um, you can add more information. You can add um, pictures of your location. You can update your address. Um, and be, when you claim a business, or in your case a library, um, they are going to um, ask you to confirm that you are actually the business owner. And there's a couple of different ways they do that. Um, they will either send a postcard with a PIN to you so they can verify that the, um, what they sent goes to the correct address so someone at that address is getting the PIN. Um, or I think they might also do it by phone. Um, but like I said, they will verify where you are. Um, a couple great things about claiming your business, not only then do you have control of your listing and nobody else can come and move it around, when you do a search in Google, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go back to Google. And So now I'm just jumping out to Google, the search engine for the web, not the map. And I'm going to go ahead and type in New Jersey State Library. And I'm guessing a lot of times you guys have done this before. You'll see in your results options there's a little map pointing to me where the New Jersey State Library is. It has a link to the library, but now there, um, there's also a link here that says more information. And clicking on that now, you'll see some of the information that the New Jersey State Library had entered after they have claimed their business. You can see they've entered a photo. Um, they haven't done a whole lot, but you can um, do photos. You can enter your business hours, so um, you can add the um, hours of libraries open. Uh, there's also an option when you claim a business to add a coupon. And you're probably all kind of wondering, you know, why would you want to add a coupon? But um, the folks over at the M Word Marketing for Libraries blog had some ideas about, you know, putting up a coupon and, um, you know, maybe a coupon for, you know, if you pay to have people print items. Maybe the coupon will give them five free, you know, prints or whatever. You can be creative. It's just another interesting way to get folks um, into the library, show them some of the things that you're doing. Um, let's see. Looks like my time is closing down here quickly. So a couple other things I want to show you. I'm going to go back to my map. And I'm not going to, I'll just show you some of the options you can use for creating your own maps. Um, you could do a map that's simply directions. So I could have used, um, did a my map to keep track of my route from uh, Falls City to Shadron. <laughs> or you can um, keep track of uh, numerous other things. And I should mention again that in order to use the my maps, you do have to have a Google account and be logged on. So I just want to show you some of the different maps that are out there. Um, I, when I was, you know, learning the system, I went ahead and created one for the Nebraska Regional Library System. So you can see here as it's loading. I have, I went through and I did each region, of the, each system, and then put a marker in each location where the system offices are located. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off and show you a few other ones that have I've run across. Now, these are not maps I've created. These are created by other folks. So here's one of the U.S. 
ESU offices in Nebraska. So there all those are, which I think is pretty cool. Um, someone else in Lincoln has done a map of all the recycling centers here in town. And here's another person who has done a map of all the disc golf courses in Nebraska. So if you're in the mood to play a little bit of frisbee and golf at once, um, here's a lot of places you can go take a look at. I'm going to go ahead now and jump back to my slides. Before I do that, does anybody have any questions? Very minimized. Okay, um, Martha asked, how do you make the map public or unlisted? That is when you, let me jump back real quick here. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to one of the maps I've made. And I'm going to just go ahead and edit the map. <clears throat> and it's not letting me edit. Okay, let me try creating a new map then. So it looks like my browser is giving me some JavaScript errors, so I'm not sure. No, it looks like I'm crashing. So I won't actually be able to show you, Martha, but when you do create a map or you edit a map, there's a simple little checkbox. Once it's public, once it's unlisted, um, you can go ahead and check either one. So it's pretty simple. It's just a simple click on the screen when you're either creating the map or when you're editing the map. Um, I went ahead and jumped back to the slides. Uh, I don't have anything really exciting on the slides, just some URLs I wanted to point out. Um, first, I have obviously the URL for the Google Maps. Uh, below that is a link to some videos about Google Maps, and I think they, they've done an excellent job. If you would like to learn more about the maps, I think the longest video there might be two minutes, but you watch them and you can learn quite a bit. They'll show you how you can create your own maps. They can show you how to get directions. They show you street view. Tons of options, like I said, for those little two-minute two videos. I think they're a great job and use, uh, useful to look at and see. I know I haven't spent a lot of time telling you about how you could use the Google Maps with your library, but um, I think if you actually take a little bit of time and think about it, you know, you can find a lot of um, uses. Uh, Mick Jacobson is here. Uh, he's a librarian, and I must admit I forgot where he is from. Has actually wrote a library journal article back in 2008 about how they use Google Maps in their library. And I have included the link there, and the full text of the article is available online, so you can go out and read and see how they're using it. Um, I mean, not only do they have uh, links or Google Maps showing how to get to the library, I think they were actually doing uh, other things in the city. Um, I think they're the ones that actually had marks on historical places. I mean, there's quite a different thing you can do with them. And then he, below that is a link to a tutorial he did in conjunction to the Library Journal article, and that one's like three minutes long, so that was a little bit longer, but again, still useful. And then the last slide here, I have links to the M Word Marketing Library's blog, so if you want to go out and read the blog and learn about how they're talking about using the coupons, you can do so. 
Um, and then I have a link to the local business center. Uh, this is a blog post that Google just did yesterday about more about how you claim your business, and I think it was a useful read. And then the last slide, since I am out of time, I also want to mention that if you have been following along in the Nebraska Learns 2.0 program, um, Google Maps is the topic for thing number 25, which we're doing for June. So um, a lot of the same stuff I have said today is available in thing 25 if you want to go out and take a look at that. So. Just so you know, all of these links are also entered in the Commission's Delicious account. So um, if you didn't get catch them from the PowerPoint, that's fine. We'll have a link out when the recording goes up to all of these collections there. Um, that's all I have. Does anybody have any other questions for me? Okay, well, thanks everybody for coming. And I'll let Krista okay. wrap up here. <laughs> um, I, if you have any other questions, thank you very much. Thank you, Alana. That was very cool and interesting. Um, the session has been recorded. It will be available later today or tomorrow. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when our topic will be the new and improved library and information services program. Um, if you're interested in getting a um, library degree of sorts. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll see you here again next Wednesday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.